Here we go. So we should be now live. Um, hello and welcome everyone. If you can hear this, we are going to do some quick audio testing and uh, video testing. Um, if you may notice, this is a slightly different format and we are missing some people. Uh, normally, our beloved friend Evan Griffin is the one uh, hosting this and making it look nice and just being a better um, stream streamer than I am. But uh, I'm hosting it this time. Just to, you know, give, lighten the load. He's got he's working on Tribeca stuff. Make sure you check out more of Young Folk stuff about all our Tribeca coverage. Um, and so, yeah, this will be, hopefully, this might be a one-off. Uh, I'm getting confirmation that we are coming through. Uh, everybody else speak. Make sure my, my, um, <laughs> my desktop capture is working and everybody can hear the rest of my people. Otherwise, it's just me. In, in Hello. Audio novel. Thank check, you. check. You're listening. To, you're listening to NPR, National Public Radio. Wonderful. Wonderful. We wish. Other that's our contrapoints reference. So. Great. So, um, yeah, I guess we have the go ahead. I'm sorry if there's a slight audio visual lag. Sometimes it's like that because I use OBS and a Mac, and both of those hate me and trying to use anything that looks cool. Um, but yeah, we'll still push through and uh, see how it is. So pl please let us know, and I guess we will re-examine how this turns out for uh, future streams. But uh, so with that, with all that, with all those like heavy disclaimers and all those asterisks out of the way, uh, let's jump in to this <laughs> session of the Dungeon Folks, our live stream D and D campaign where we at the young folks stop talking movies and movies and music, start playing Dungeons and Dragons. I am Alex Suffolk and your Dungeon Master. I am joined by Travis, Ryan, and Justin. Everybody else is busy. But it's okay, because again, we have split storylines once more, and so we can get away with stuff like this. So, let's oh, yeah. begin the session 15. So, a new day is dawning for our heroes. They have scattered across the city in order to secure invitations for a gala, where they plan to stage a heist. And all the invitations have been secured, but in the process of doing this, Everyone has discovered, discovered more secrets and tensions within this city known as the jungle. Flint, our favorite dwarf fighter, has become the champion of the Hall of Wars Fight Club and has angered a group known as Team Fireball along the way. Ori, our dragonborn monk, in his efforts to, um, on his own personal quest for redemption as well as his, his wanderings through the bazaar has disturbed uh, several cults and attracted their attention, as well as adopting his own young ward. Um, Karnov and the Tiefling and Merit, our human rogue, have uh, both gone forward to seek the audience with Ziggy Starchild, the greatest musician in the city, and they've secured their invitation. But along the way, um, Ziggy got captured. And the party had to stage a daring rescue, which involved stealing a staff from the depths of a sewers in exchange for his life. And the person they ended up exchanging the staff with, uh, the person who was holding Ziki Capture, turned out to be none other than the princess of the city itself, who was on, who was on the run from a great um, foe known only as Nakresh, the great tiger king. And the party has learned more about that and learned more about the greater implications and the bigger the bigger movers and shakers of this city as a result of that. Yep. And uh, the last person to secure an invitation was Alexandris, our human cleric. And in the midst of his becoming the royal envoy, he was sent on a detective mission. And that is how he discovered one man named Felix Thorncutter who is a revenant returned from the grave and must be put down. And uh, But it turns out he is connected to a, a bigger conspiracy with the Church of Life. And so who knows what will unfold with that. But one thing that surely is unfolding is Karnov's flesh as he wakes up and he realizes that the beast of the depths of the sewers might have left him with something. And so with that, I like to start this with Karnov, roll me a constitution saving throw. 
Okay. 14. 14. You are either just short or that's just what you need. So, Karnov, you take one point of poison damage. Okay. And you feel, you bend down and you look at where this monster bit you. And you sort of like poke at the flesh and it just flakes off. Almost as if you were a, rep a reptile shedding skin. And you feel like you have a headache growing and you feel like there's something still swarming in your system. And as soon as you have that thought, you begin coughing vehemently. <laughs> you are also poisoned. You have the poison condition, which means you have disadvantage on all ability checks and attack Damn. attack rolls. Neat. And this coughing wakes up you, Alexandrus, and Merritt. Uh, Flint is still snoring quite loudly. Uh, if you look at him, he has heavy bruises that he sustained throughout his several battles yesterday. And um, Ori and Turgit are actually gone. It seems, I mean, hmm. it's not like they disappeared. It looks like, um, you know, their bed has been, like, opened as if someone has departed the bed and not made it. So they're out and about somewhere. Meanwhile, Flint okay. is snoring. But Alexandrus and Merritt, you have woken up, and uh, you probably see this. You all share the same room at the Dragon's Dungeon Inn. You see that uh, Karnov is looking down at sort of his uh, abdomen, and there's this, like, growing like black streak which is very um which is very you know it contrasts greatly with his very pale albino skin oh shoot we didn't do anything about that uh, uh <laughs> yeah. okay alexandrus you're a, a cleric -y, healy guy what do we do like has that got like has that gotten worse since yesterday uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you tell me. I, I'd say yes. The wound sir, is bad, but you definitely sure got more dramatic. Um, <laughs> yeah, that fake cough hurts, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, don't mm -hmm. kill yourself yet. <laughs> yeah, we're so definitely going. A, med yeah. a medicinal man, I would... Go downstairs and drink enough vodka for you to fall asleep again. But I'm also, and you know, not the person to ask. So we need to find a person to ask. Do you, you know a person to ask? You've been here longer than we are. Should I? Can I use a history check, Alec? Alec, uh, stop it. Use a medicine check. Medicine. Check. Okay. So let me just check what I have. Six. Okay, so I'm going to roll. So seven. Seven total. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so you're just sort of examining the wound. It looks bad, and it looks like it's growing. You're not a hundred percent sure what it is. Okay. Uh, but you do know it's getting worse. And actually, uh, Karnov, at the moment, your hit point maximum is also reduced by one. Is that... Oh, okay. So what is it normally? 31. 31? Right now it's 30. Okay. Alex, you kind of daft punked out for me. I was just telling um, Travis that his HP maximum is reduced by one as well. Yeah, I, I heard that, but you sounded like you were daft punking out. Well, hopefully the stream doesn't so it doesn't like... Well, the stream is picking it directly from my mic, so I sound fine. To everyone watching. Lucky. Good. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, what good about for me. Green Wizard. Maybe he knows something. Seems to know a lot about potions and crap. That's actually not the worst idea. Yeah. This affliction seems like it's more than just a simple attack. 
Like you might need an actual special potion or something. Wait, you mean that I had a good idea? I, me, this is my good idea? I had a good idea? My, uh, my that I'm taking uh, all the credit for? Uh, you know what? A broken clock is right twice a day, so... Yes, <laughs> broken clock! A broken clock! Hooray for the broken clock! You know, in retrospect, maybe dying is not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Like, you may be dying, but I'll still spare the dying. You are not leaving me with him. <laughs> 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 well, plus one to the broken clock. All right, so uh, uh, all let's, right find, then. Uh, let's find Captain uh, Green Road Man guy. Oh, you're going. You're going to Old Greeny. Of... Yeah. yeah, we're gonna go to Old Greeny and hopefully not get sent to hell for a while. Wow. Okay. I, wait a minute. I was not wait. Wait a minute. Who's Old Greeny? You've never been to. You... Alexandris has never met Old Greeny. No. Like, can uh, oh. someone explain Old Greeny, or should I just nah, like? You're gonna just experience it. I mean, they can ex they can ex oh, like... they can explain in character if they wish. Should we explain to him who? Old yes, Greeny yes, is? We we, yes, yes, we should. Yes, yes, we should. Uh, so uh, he's uh, an eccentric old wizard, as they often are, and uh, he let's just say has an affinity for the color green. We a small inconvenience in his basement for him mm. and um yeah well he knows us and he knows a lot about potions and crap that's all you need to know okay just a minor inconvenience in his basement just a little one just a bit little one just a just just a tip yeah just a just yeah it's it's as good a place to start as anything else okay we killed the gelatinous cube in the basement. It nearly yeah. killed us all. Yeah. That My seems character. to, yeah. that seems part to be... That's part of the reason why we're comprehensive about going back to him. You might make us fight another gelatinous cube. Uh, I mean, getting almost killed in a fight seems to be par for the course for me, so let's go! It must... Right. As the first entity in the first place. Okay, so um, you guys all set up, and you get you get up, and you go down to the um, uh, the tavern of the Dragon's Dungeon Inn, and there it's uh, it's pretty early in the morning. There's not a huge amount of people there. There is um, there's still that one half orc who's wearing a wizard hat and nothing else, and he's sort of off in a corner reading a book. Um, there's a few other humans milling about, and you see, sitting at the bar, is Alvin Blacklung, your gnome compatriot, who was... Oh, great. The one who oh, was... Oh, I mean, oh, hi! Do, How are you? Do not look at him. Yeah, don't look at him. <laughs> he's gonna uh, notice us. We're not We're not easy to forget. Yeah, he's been He's been watching, like, the door that goes into the room. He's been waiting for you guys, and so he's just like, hey! Hi. Hey. Hi. So, uh, we'll get, we might have to get back to you because we're currently in the middle of a medical emergency. Uh, but you know who is upstairs? Flint. And he'd be glad to see you and talk to you. Why don't you go talk to him? And, and you know, he's a little late getting up. He might like to see your, your face in the morning. Make a persuasion check. Oh, what is my persuasion now? That's right. Uh, I think it's plus two now. To, to what my uh it is now yeah it's a plus two to persuasion all right well i rolled a, a 14 plus two so that's 16 he's like all right that sounds great i'll go right on up then have a great day and um he sort of just uh he gets off the stool which is clearly meant for like a human so he has to kind of hop and then he sort of just <laughs> Uh, jauntily walks on over to the stairs and goes apparently to go wake up Flint. <laughs> that tell Flint we say hi. Good morning. That worked surprisingly well. Yeah, sixteen. Stop it. Well, it's a new merit. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so you are free to go. You just uh, head over to Old Greeny. Yep, that's we're going straight there. All right. I'm just going to just follow their lead. Okay, y'all get on the uh, train 
So you walk through the tunnels, you walk past all the uh, the steaming uh, holes in the ground and the, the ruined cobblestones and the alleyways and the buildings nearly toppling. <laughs> and Karnov feels progressively worse. And uh, it's sort of like this growing like ache in your lung. That's sort of, and like, as you breathe in through the mouth, it feels um, like there's always something perpetually at the back of it. And you, and you can't, you always have like a slight wheeze. <laughs> and so um, you get on the uh, train and it's a, it's a bit of a long ride because you're going like seven stops directly. No you're at the bottom, it's further south of the city. You're going all the way north back up to the docks. And um, so you get out, and the first thing you hear is seagulls and chatter of various people coming off boats. You hear bells ding, 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 as boats are making dock and making port. Uh, some people shuffling back and forth. Uh, you recognize this area, Karnov and Merritt. This is where you landed on the boat several days before, uh, or several months in stream time. Uh, no. oh, <laughs> it's yes. only been days? Wow. It's been one week in world time, yes. Welcome to D and D, where time is loopy doopy. Woo! So this is uh, we need like a timeline. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time uh, you've been here, Alexandrus. I, I think. Or actually, no, you probably this is where you arrived here in the city when you, you came here before the rest of the party. But um, this is the first time you've been to Old Greenies. So as you walk past all the you know little the wooden shacks, you see a couple of uh, bigger buildings, sort of brick and mortar, and they're actually uh, banks. And uh, mm -hmm. you see uh, another tent that belongs to the Spice Guild, and it has two guards outside of it with uh, exotic-looking pole arms standing guard of it. And uh, you walk past all of that to this one house with a front lawn that stores out, stands out like a sore thumb because of how green it is. There's, like, freshly mowed grass, two huge oak trees, and a uh, house completely coated in vines... The house of which it looks sort of like Victorian mansion, and it's painted green. And the only thing that's not green here is the wood of the trees and a wooden sign over the house, which reads "The Prophet's Pasture." Yep, that sounds about right. That looks familiar. So, so does this guy really just have a green fetish or something? I mean, I don't him. kink shame, but yeah, he likes the color. <laughs> I you mean, should ask him you see him next to what he did to him. Yeah, that's actually a funny story. If you I, ever want to annoy Flint, just yell green in his ears over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. All right, let's go inside so I don't die. All right, I'm going to knock a jangle on the door. Okay. Uh, you knock. And then the door opens on its own. You just hear a voice say, Well, then come on in. I'll be there in a minute. Oh, that voice. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll how did, how, all enter. How was I not here for that voice? <laughs> so you, uh, you enter, and um, this is a new place for you, Alexander. You notice just like how busy this place looks. Also, it looks like a mansion. It looks like you're about to walk into somebody's house, but you walk in, and it's just like a very small shack, or like a small like shop. You walk in. There is a, a, a you know, like a counter, and uh, there's a glass display with lots of different odd, odds and ends. There is like a, a robe and a wand and little rocks, some various stones, and you see all sort of along the walls. There's various items. There's um, there's several wands. There's a helmet. There's a shield, and they're all just sort of. It's almost like a magic pawn shop. And it's all sort of loosely thrown about in here. And you notice in one corner of the room where there's a door, there's actually looks like a tree trunk growing through it. And mm. then the uh, the door swings open and out walks a human man with a long bushy white beard, a green robe, a green top hat, and uh, one eye is uh, sort of gray, you know, bluish, but the other eye is just pure green. And he, he has this big sort of doofy grin, and he has several teeth missing, and he's just like, "Well, hello, welcome to the Prophet's Pasture. How can I help you? <laughs> Are you looking to acquire any arcane items today, or do you require arcane services?" Depends. Services. My... <laughs> <laughs> you die. Well, my, my, my associate will do the talking. 
And he's looking. Which one? The, the coughing the one. Oh, I have to do it? <coughs> You're the one who's dying, cough, isn't it? It's, to make, it's because I'm coughing, isn't it? Uh, okay. So, we fought a fecal matter creature in the sewer. Log story. Now, why did you do that? That sounds terrible. Uh, it was. It was genuinely it was the worst. It was extremely excruciating, yes. It was genuinely the worst, and it got me uh, pretty good. Whereabouts here in my body? And <clears throat> uh, long story short, I appeared to be dying. Okay. Yep, and we were and going you to make see him not die. We were going to see if you could be familiar. You might be familiar with the type of wound and what we might be able to do. Well, I, I, I guess I can take a look. It's outside of my expertise, but I can try. Alrighty. And if you yeah. can't, can you tell us? Can you direct us in the direction of somebody who could? Probably. Yeah, Karn, I'll show him your wound. So I'll show him the wound. All right. He sort of uh, he doesn't he doesn't like go up to you. He sort of like looks over the counter. He sort of wiggles his eyebrows, and it it looks like in the middle of the green eye, it almost looks like there's a faint black dot that's looking at it. <laughs> like his pupil. And um, he sort of leans back and say. Well, you're dying, all right. <laughs> okay, good to know that I was right on that part. But, it looks um, like you fought in Otyug. Nice. A what? Well, colloquially, some people call them poop monsters. That's an act description. That, that sounds exactly like what we thought, yes, correct. Like a definition. And sometimes they're made to protect things. Other times they just kind of grow out of the filth and eat more filth. It's it just sounds like one. a grow variety. Well, either way, is bad. You're diseased. What can I do about it? And he points over to you, Alexander. He's like, well, this guy looks like a holy son of a bitch. He got magic that can clear that right up. What the hell? Like, should I just heal him with, like, cure? It's a spell or like restoration. A spell, like, I have a spell that, calls, that says protection from poison. Restoration is the spell you need. Now, if, you, if, oh, you're, if really? your fine associate can't do it, then I'm sure there's plenty of people in religion row. I can get you all set up. Alexandrus? Can you repeat that? You guys kind of, like, broke out. Restoration. A lesser should be fine. Oh, I have lesser restor restoration. <laughs> so I guess I can use that. That's you can. So shall I use? So I shall use lesser restoration. I guess. Oh, okay. On him. Yeah. So. Alrighty. Um, you uh, hold your holy symbol of Kelimvor, and you um, sort of lay your hand out, fingers glowing. And it's almost like it, it feels sort of wet, as if there's like some sort of like salve on them. And you sort of just swipe your fingers across Karnov's wound, and it fades into a bruise. Karnov, you're no longer poisoned. Uh, your, your HP maximum is back up to 31. Uh, you're still at 30 HP. You still took like a hit from feeling bad that morning. But it is cured. And Greeny's standing there and he's like, that'll be one gold for consultation. Yeah, sounds fair. Alexander, give the man a gold. I... <laughs> <laughs> I, give, I give Merrick the dirtiest look ever as I reach in to like, grab my gold and give it to Greeny. Why, well, thank you, sir. That are doing business. I don't recognize you. These two yes. boys fought a cube in my basement. Yeah. That one's definitely a cube over there. Where's your sassy friend? Uh. He, uh. 
Is I hope to God he's still asleep. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, yeah, we probably uh, messed that up. <laughs> well, sounds good. Are you here to buy some? Uh, besides your help, which we got, I'm good. Depends. I'm good. Depends. What do you got for us today? Oh, I got all sorts of stuff. Uh, I can sell you a bag of holding, an alchemy jug, a circlet of blasting, a hand axe, and I got a load of other little knickknacks I could just put them down and sort of rummage through. I also have mystery boxes. Any sort of We're good with you... the mystery boxes. How much are you selling the bag of holdings for? <laughs> <laughs> A bag of holes? That'll run you 500 gold. You don't have 500 gold. Uh, Alex, how much is a, a one platinum in gold? Uh, one platinum is 10 gold. Ah, uh, nuts. Oh, well. Uh, you got anything in the, like, three to five gold range? Three to five? Well, let me look. And he sort of, um, rummages through. He's like, mm hmm I got plenty in the 20 gold range. Mm. I'm kind of there. Uh, what do you have in the 20 gold range? Well, let me look. Uh, magic items, magic items. I, ha I need to really bookmark this thing. There's a fun... Ah, there we go. Yes. Let's pull out the good stuff. Yes. Okay. He's like, well, I have one of these. And he pulls out a um, a fancy wizard's hat. And it's blue with a bunch of shooting stars. And it's sparkly. And he um, sort of digs around. And he's like, oh, this might not be your thing. But and he pulls out a helmet. Which has like it's a steel helmet and just has like these glowing red eyes. And he's like, "Oh, I'm a fan of this one. I'll need this one as I get older." And he pulls out a steel horn. And he places it on the table. And he's like, "Oh, I, you know this, this buddy, he might like this." And he pulls out a um, a set of uh, leather armor, and it looks like it has a bunch of like threads all throughout it, and it is sort of a grayish color. Any of these strike your fancy? Mm. Well, boys, you see anything that we can pull our money towards? I mean, we're traveling together, you might as well buy something for the whole party. We paid him for his help. Um, I, I don't see anything that we really need. Oh, you also got this one. And he pulls out a wand. Yeah. My eyes, uh, Merritt's eyes grow wide at the wand. This what one, is this to This one has the magic to make anybody happy. Hmm. How? That yep. could come in handy. Like this! And he grabs it, and he points it right at you, Karnoff, and I'd like you to make a charisma saving throw. Come on. <laughs> 19. Nothing, uh, nothing happens. Uh, well, it works yeah, this like this! this. And he points it at you, Alexander, so roll me a charisma saving throw. <laughs> oh, man. It's just a d20, right? Yeah. Uh, 18. Nothing happens. Uh, like this! And he points it at you, uh, Merritt. Roll me a charisma saving throw. Oh, I, yeah. passed, we could fail. I passed the Christmas saving throw because Merritt is so interested in figuring out what this wand does. Yeah. Oh, you you I abstain from the wand throw. He right. looks at it with bright eyes and wants it to come at him. Okay, you choose to fail, and then you stand there and you feel your cheeks tingle as you lose control, and Alexandris and Karnov, you see as Merritt Gives you both the biggest, toothiest, 
wildest, doofiest grin. I know what this does. <laughs> and, you're, <laughs> and you're just completely smiling, and you can't stop. Your face I is stuck. I know what this does. It's I turn- good. Get it. It will be really awful to do something to this. It's I- really good. Do you have any money for this? How much does this cost, Greeny? <laughs> I turn I turn to Karnov and I just say, I know this isn't supposed to be a spell or anything, but I don't see much of a difference. Yeah, <laughs> it, he, if anything, he looks scarier now. Yeah, Mary is just frozen. <laughs> like, he's speaking through clenched teeth. He can't stop grinning. And Greeny's How like, much yeah. does this cost? We could make use of this. Well, How? This one, this one will run you about 25 gold. Merritt rummages through his pocket. He currently has three platinum, seventeen gold, and twenty-nine silver. So it'd be it'd be two platinum and five gold. Two platinum, five gold. Yep. We have a deal. All right, you are now the owner of a wand of smiles. I'll send mm. you. I'll send you the uh, the details on that. <laughs> this could come in handy. <laughs> I. Still don't understand. Just, am, I so... still, am I still dying? No, you're healed. <laughs> you're dying to make a great purchase like this. And he pulls out a key. Okay. This could unlock anything. Mm, so anything? It's a skeleton key. Anything. But I'm... it's a good chance it won't work. One second, guys. But it might work at any point in time. But it might not work. It might not. It has a 95% chance of doing nothing, but a 5% chance of opening anything. I feel like that's a little misleading. I have. I feel like there's like a 100% chance of being scammed. Think yeah. of it. Think of it. For twenty gold, you might run into a locked chest or a bank vault. Yeah, you can't get into. But then this key magically opens it. Now you're gonna come across a lot of bank vaults, and it's gonna do deadly squat. But that one bank vault, it'll just open. He wiggles his fingers. What do you think, Alexandris? I I really don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm fine to pass on the I think I also am fine to pass on the key that barely works. <laughs> <laughs> We've got enough troubles in this group to have a key that doesn't work. Good point. Okay. Good point. Okay, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Any, anything else you've got? I think we got what we came here for. <laughs> Still, <laughs> I think we're fine to leave. I think we've got enough. Yeah, like it's leaving me to wonder if Meredith is high, but sure. You have no, you have no idea whether I'm still affected by the wand or I'm doing this on purpose. Uh, that's a scary prospect. <laughs> Yeah, let's get out of here. Thanks again. You know, you know, I think we're good. I think we can leave Greeny. Thanks again, Greeny. Okay. The Prophet's Pay sure appreciates your business. <laughs> you come back now. And I say under my breath, just, oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> For the past three minutes, I've been doing that on purpose. But this could be a very mean thing to use. I'm just yeah. looking at him now. So- just... <sighs> So what, it, so what it does is it, it has three charges a day, and you point it at someone. They have to make a charisma saving throw. If they fail, they smile for, like, ten <laughs> minutes, and they can't do anything else. Well, five minutes, five minutes. Yeah, they just s- stop. They're, like, frozen. Their so face, you can run away from somebody. They're not, like, they can't do anything. Just, like, no matter what they're doing, they will be smiling. So you're saying they can try and kill us and kill us while yeah. smiling dudes. Yeah, they will still chase after you, just like... <laughs> that'll be so a, that'll turn, be. Fun. So you want to turn people into the Joker? 
Yeah, it's a Joker wand. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm. It, it's now you're sold. <laughs> Anything right. Batman. So, um, is there actually while this is all happening, um, Alexandris? I'd like you to roll a religion check. Okay. Well done. Um, hey Travis, anyone in the chat giving me grief for eating on stream? No. Uh, 12. Twelve. Not yet, anyway. Okay. So, um, you can't help but think more about like what um, Madame Zitalia called Felix a revenant, and um, you're thinking back about about it even more now, and you know that a revenant is a creature, is a spirit that keeps finding new bodies physical bodies from the prime material plane. And so you begin to wonder if if you cast this banishment spell, if it'll target the body or the spirit inside, and you might have to, like, separate them in order for it to be effective. Okay. Meaning you might have to destroy his body first, and then you can permanently send away mm. the spirit. Damn it, Alex, you keep making it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> And you're wondering, you've only encountered Felix by yourself. Yes, I do need help this time. So, Merrick and Karnov, would you be able to please help me in defeating the zombie once and for all? Well, you, uh, you tagged along to this, so... <laughs> zombie? Yeah, that, that seems fair. Yes. Z zombie? Wait, wait, go, yes. go back to where you said the word zombie. We were talking about this before. Yeah, but I forgot. I tend to do that. What's my yes. what are my one of my things? The revenant. Maybe we should have fought the one so we could hit him with it. Yes. The revenant zombie that I was unable to kill before is still alive and finally have the spell to send him back to hell. Will you will you and Karnoff be the Willow and Xander to my Buffy? <laughs> <laughs> What's a Buffy? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. It's probably, it's probably some old, probably old, some old fable. But uh, yes, hmm. old, an old legendary female warrior. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, I'll go with you. Seems reasonable. Sure, I guess. Yes. Now we have to head back to Religion Row. Yep. The Revenant. Lead the way. Indeed you do. We're going to go zombie hunting. Y'all going to hunt some zombies. So, you all get back on the train, and you ride it a few, only like two uh, two stops uh, down. Religion Row is pretty far to the north of the city. And um, this is the first time that uh, Marriott and Karnov have been here, I think. Alexandra, so you were more, yes. than, you were more than familiar with all the various uh, mega churches sort of all sort of piled together. Um, on either side of this a river channel that flows through the city at this portion of it. And um, so Merritt and Karnov, you're, you are, you know, you can't help but be impressed that you see, like, there's, like, this looks like this huge wooden sort of warrior barbaric, like, Viking aesthetic hall next to a, uh, across from a church that's totally black with many spires. And um, sort of in the back, there's this huge building that sort of overlooms, overlooks everything. And it has, it's made of completely out of crystal, and as the light shoots through it, there's like these uh, gradients of color everywhere. And um, there is a rather large church that is completely uh, white, and it's got uh, steeples and buttresses. And you notice there is a huge crowd gathered around it. And there is oh, so great. something hanging from one of the buttresses. Well, that's probably not good. Go and the gate. Definitely not a good sign. Yeah, so. I'm probably also... Here's a thought that I just had. I'm probably standing out pretty obviously here in the religious sector of the city. Yeah, you do notice that like, as you're walking by, there's some sort of people in robes that sort of like give you second glances, but you do get the impression that this is a big cosmopolitan place, and you, Alexander, you know that like they serve basically every religion here. So there's all sorts of weirdos. There's all sorts of everyone 
this one be this is ironically might want to be one of the more accepting places if only because everyone worships everything here oh well, that's good and also and, you're... and again there's most of the people who seem to be congregating by what alexander you know is the life church this massive yeah. cathedral so let's go see who died probably who was murdered probably by the the zombie thing that you're probably looking for Just yeah that, guess. yeah that's a pretty safe guess yeah let's go look let's see who died let's see who died he chants audibly <laughs> let's see who died let's see who died <laughs> while he does that i'm gonna go ahead and do an investigation check on kind of the area all right what are you uh, looking for just anything out of the ordinary any people out of the ordinary anybody kind of rushing to get out of the scene uh 14 14 um i'm looking for suspicious activity around this crime scene okay um with a 14 you don't notice um too much more than what is readily apparent like i said as you're getting closer you notice that there's more and more people sort of crowding around this um the church and you notice that nobody's entering it there's actually there's some people keeping a perimeter, and you see them, and they're guards. You almost, and you realize you've never seen guards in this city before. They seem to be really rare, but there they are. They um, they're sort of standing there. There's a police force. They're standing I there. Operating <laughs> Power Rangers logic. And like golden, uh, and sort of uh, not entirely golden, but sort of like goldish, whitish. It's a dull gold, um, more of a bronze really. Uh, chainmail, and they have sort of um. Uh, spiked helmets. They're all wear They're all holding uh, spears and shields. And on the shields um, is a motif that is very familiar because it's. It was all over uh, Princess Magla's mansion, and it is that of a bear with a crown on it. And that's how you mm. know that these are, in fact, the royal guard. And they're sort of there, just sort of containing people and pushing them back. And as you approach, you see that this thing that everyone's looking up and pointing at is a woman hanging from a rope and she has a, oh dear God. she has a sign but sort of posted to her body and there's rough writing on it can uh, i read investigation throw do we know this woman uh perception from everybody and um i guess alexander's can also roll a history okay yeah perception uh, you said yeah uh for from merit and karnoff would have no idea who this is maybe alexander's knows 18 for perception okay 16 11 all right and then what for your for the history what about that uh for my history is 18 18 okay so alexandris you re you look at like her haircut um you know realize that she is uh, half elven and uh from her uh her attire it's it, it she bears the um the holy symbol of Palor on her shoulders, but she has these black stripes that go along um, between her shoulder and her neck, which is more of a somber position within the life church. It is that of someone who reads the last rites to a person um, before they are executed. And so mm. you know this instantly clicks. This is good sister Bree. This was the next person on Felix's list. And uh, with an 18, you can read um, Merit that she has a sign and it's sort of writ it's written in dried blood and it reads this is a church of lies and demons death to Aranus. well someone's mad at this uh tyrannus dude this tyrannosaurus guy you uh you know this dude uh Alex, the this is the high priest Aranus. this guy was mentioned in a lot of the notes that you found in the house yeah, this is the the little conspiracy thing that I was telling Flint about earlier. This is why Felix is so pissed off. She's on the list. Ooh, spooky, scary! I, I do a kind of a little goofy dance. It, it, it's very it's very clear from the way that that Merritt is talking that he has this like kind of goofy uh, feeling towards this specific church. Uh, is 
Wait, hold on. Is Tra okay, Travis was frozen in this position <laughs> for a while. <laughs> I was doing this. Did I mess it up? No, no, it's fine. Yes, it's fine. It's fine. quite. I was yes. trying to put on music and things were dying. So screw it. No, yeah. no, no music Happens. today. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, what would you guys like to do? Well, I you're, guess now, you you're now in yeah. the crowd. It, it's up to Alexandris, really. Is there this is your bag, dude? Can, can we investigate to see if we, if I recognize anybody like that I've chatted with before? Uh, roll a perception check. <laughs> My rolls are terrible with perception. Which is uh, better because you're a cleric. It should be pretty good. Eight. Eight. Wow. Uh, no, it, there's a lot. It's a really chaotic scene. There's people sort of screaming, and uh, like the guards are really trying to like just like get people to get the hell out of there. And um, you know, it's like her body is sort of swinging, and people are like pointing at the sign, and like some people are beginning to read it and being like, "What's going on?" And they're look ask they're looking really confused and frantic. And um, it is at that moment that you all hear that everyone stops and freezes. Everyone is silenced by this loud and deafening screech. And then you hear a great flapping of wings and another roar. And then cresting over the church is this creature, large, almost this, the size of, you know, like a flying lion, practically. These huge white wings but a blue body with elongated human-like limbs ending in these long talons, feet protruding also with talons, bird-like, a face somewhere between that of a human's and a vulture's with this long blue beak. And as it opens its beak, you see that there are many rows of teeth, sort of like an impossible, an impossible amount. It takes up the entire roof and bottom of it, no tongue, and it just screeches again. <laughs> As it okay. And, and the guards are preparing, and they're like they're looking back at the people. And the people just start like fleeing, and the the creature actually swoops down to the body, and then cuts the rope with its mouth and grabs Good Sister Bree, and snatches snatches the corpse in his hand, and then you see another figure moving alongside one of the gargoyles, and this figure sort of runs off of a buttress and leaps onto this flying creature and just with a with a big fist just lands a wild haymaker right on this flying creature's face and then grabs on and you just and this the creature screams and sort of flaps and you see these these sort of green particles and feathers coming down from it as this as this ragged dark figure is holding onto the creature and just like rapidly decking it in the face and the creature sort of smashing it's flying and it smashes into the church to try to dislodge the other the the figure but he's just like holding on and bashing into it i'd like everyone to roll a perception check really quick i'm like mouthing in slow motion what is going on i rolled another 18 17 i dropped my dice <laughs> <laughs> so natural 20 uh, oh, if only. Uh, eight this time, so that's useful. Okay, so, um, oh. Karnov, you're witnessing just this act of pure chaos. It's almost It would almost be, like, awesome and entertaining if you weren't also really confused as to what's happening. Uh, Merit, you look up, and you see that this figure that is punching the hell out of this huge blue bird-like creature has a noose tied around the neck. And you look up, Alexandrus, and you see two burning, orange, angry eyes of Felix fight, fighting this I, creature. I turn to Alexandrus, and I point, and I say, so, uh, that's your guy, yeah? Oh, yeah, that's him. Uh, where'd he get the, where, where'd he get the flying thing? Is that new? Yeah, that's definitely new. And so uh, Felix is now just like bashing into this thing's face and it's like chomping away at like his leg and tearing away the flesh. And you see so, like the flesh, so, the sinews of the flesh slowly uh, reach out and weave together again as his wounds are closing almost as quickly as the beast is dealing with them. 
and he's just like you bashing into this thing's eye and it's, it seems like his fists just aren't connecting and so the beast flaps and he's sort of it almost is like he's like directing the creature and the two of them sort of flap off ha ha haphazardly and you see the um trajectory alexander's they're heading back towards the church the the church under construction where you last confronted felix and it looks so like they're about to crash so I turn to Merrick and I just say, you see that thing that happened to the flesh? That's why I could kill him. Uh, so, and how are we, so what do we do? How Can are I... we supposed to kill him? We need to get, we need to destroy the body before he regenerates. So how do we do that? Fire! Can I do that, Can I do that with my one smiles? <laughs> yeah. So what... If you want to die, please maybe. try. Please. <laughs> so one of the big things that I learned from fighting him the cool. last time, weapons didn't do a lot of damage to him. We have to go towards like as much firepower as you can. Three casts of Tasha's hideous laughter. Got it. <laughs> well, he could do what he wants to do, but we'll actually go for it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm oh, being oh. facetious. I fought like they're Tell heading towards the they're heading towards the constructed church. We have to go fight him at the constructed church. I guess. You know what? The sooner he's dead, the sooner we get to celebrate and you can like that's dance why on I, his grave. That's why I said I guess. It's not like we have a choice. We have to kill this guy before he kills again. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so how do we get up on this thing that he's attacking? No, like the church, there is an opening. Like, I think with the three of us, we can break through the door of the church. He'll eventually, gate and just he'll go eventually fall off. I mean, he's a, a zombie. He, he's not. He's going to eventually fall off this uh, griffin or this uh, auk or whatever the heck it is. It's at this moment they hear a large crash in the distance, and you hear that piercing scream again. That's so our guy. Oh, Felix. <clears throat> so well, we're let's going. Make him la well, let's Fight make him laugh zombie. until he dies. Okay. Sure. Oh, sorry. Let's go get the zombie. Yup. So, um, Alexander, so you lead Merritt and Karnov over off to the side, sort of where the, um, the sort of like an apartment complex is for religious workers to live nearby the churches. And um, everyone's sort of, like, rushing by. The guards don't know, like, what the hell they're doing. And um, you actually, they're sort of, like, speaking to each other. Like and they're like, we need to send men over there. What? Where are they going? <laughs> it's like, did, did, did Siegfried, uh, that? Siegfried doesn't pay us enough for this. And, like, they're sort of arguing with each other. And they don't even realize that you're booking it and you guys know exactly where to go. The people at this point are just scared and confused and scattering. And um, so as you approach the sort of the construction site... You see that there's some people sort of running away from it. Some some uh, dwarves and half-orcs with hammers and nails and belts sort of beside them. It seems like the construction crew was actually there and working, and they have all left as you hear sort of loud banging and crashing and roaring and some, like, loud, like, sort of, like, uh, human-like screams, but raspier. And you notice that there's a big gaping hole in, like, the wall of one of the churches. And you just hear... While we're running... While we're running, I'm picking up like three or four hammers, just in case. All right, you can add. You have three, um, yeah, three hammers in your inventory. So, um, you find that hole in the gate where you crawled out of in your first encounter with Felix, and so um, you crawl back through it, and you get out. Um, you get out and towards the entrance to the church. And the, the sounds are growing aggressively louder of crashing and smashing and banging of rubble and glass and wood snapping. What would you like to do? We have to hand it. Yeah. Well, Alexandrus, you know what? Do you yeah. Know I'm what just you following know? Alexandrus's lead. Okay. Do okay. It. Let's go. Let's go through the hole. Like we have to just get inside that church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let, right. let, let's talk him more stabby. So the the stabby work on this guy. Well, before we go and stab him. So y'all walk in to the church and you see 
I mean, already, Alexander, so you realize that this place was already kind of wrecked when you were here before. Now it looks even worse. What pews there were and, like, the altar that was once right here has become this, like, big pit into the ground. The pews are here all smashed. Some of the pillars holding up the integrity of the entire place Yoy. have been crashed down. And you see, sort of hovering in the air with a sort of snapped wing, the, um, this creature, large and blue and bird-like, and sort of just going, just staring him down, you see the shape of Felix the Orncutter. And y'all walk in right about over here. You notice there's this large chasm right in front of all of you. And then over here, there's a lot of rubble. There's some broken pews over here you can hide behind. More rubble over here, another chasm. And let's see, that's actually over there. And, uh... Actually, just to make it nice for the camera, we'll say. Rearranging scenery on the fly because I'm God. <laughs> All right, so we're there, we're there, we're there. Yeah. Woo! All right. And now I'd like all of you guys to roll some initiative. 17. Okay. In flavor with the dice rolls today. 15. 7. <laughs> okay, so what were they again? 17. Okay. And... 15. Okay. 7. All right. Okay, so I had some uh, good rolls, so I needed to get punished eventually. Merit, you go first. You see this creature? He's about uh, 10 feet up in the air, sort of hovering. And it looks like one of his wings is already sort of snapped, and he's barely struggling to keep afloat. And he's currently staring at uh, Felix, or this this figure with gray, pallid flesh and a hood and a noose around his neck. And you sort of, like, you see yeah, yeah, this I... orange light sort of coming out of his face like a cone where he's staring. I lob a magic missile at Felix. Okay, roll your uh, 3d4 plus 3. 3d4 plus... It's a 4, a 3, and a 4. Plus 3. So... It's a 6, 6 so. and an 8. 14? 14 points of damage. So... Cool. So you instinctively just pull out your finger, and these three dark, these three white bolts shoot out of it and crash into his pale flesh. And he sort of staggers back for a second, and he looks, and now you see you you come eye to eye with these two like burning coals in his eye sockets, and they flare orange. And he just says, and he and he scans and he notices you three now. And he's just like, you picked the worst time, priest. I just realized we're hunting Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie Batman. I'm not Batman. wearing hockey pads. <laughs> so, um, uh, is anywhere you'd like to move, Merritt? No, I'm just going to stay where I am, and I'm going to keep throwing fucking magic missiles out for, the rep for my next three turns. Okay. Just as a heads up. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Alexandrus, it's your turn. Oh, me? I'm going to, um, what was it? I'm going to shoot Sacred Flame at Felix. Okay, he's got to roll a dexterity saving throw. He rolls a 19, so I believe Phew. he succeeds. So and as he's staring right at you, like he's staring you down, and you summon the flame, and he knows it's coming, he just like dodges out of it. And he looks, and the, the creature roars at him. In fact, the creature hasn't quite noticed the three of you yet, and it just comes down and swoops, crashes down on the ground, and just goes for him. So. First, it, it bites out with this huge, elongated beak. And that is a six plus six. That is a twelve. And misses, actually. 
So it, you hear like this like clap and like this uh, grind as his beak full of teeth just snap at thin air as, the, as Felix dodges out of the way of it. And then it comes down with these huge, long, scimitar-like talons de- right down onto his shoulder. And that is a 17 that will hit. And so Felix takes... Um, ooh, Felix takes 20 points of damage. Ooh. Finally. As it just <sighs> bears right down on him. And now it's his turn. And he's just like... Ugh. And you see um, around his chest uh, where the talons raked. It sort of slowly closes in a little bit. And he regains some health. And then... He will look at the creature, and his eyes glow red, and this beam of orange light washes over the creature, and it shoots out of his eyes, and the creature sort of, like, rears back and screams, and it has to roll a wisdom saving throw, and it fails, so... As, as, the, as the creature is awashed in this orange light, it it comes back down from the sky and it's almost like it's like paralyzed in fear as it's looking at this creature and it's nervous and it's trembling staring at Felix and he cocks his head cricks his neck and then just clocks it in the face jeez he's hard as heck and what have we been messing as a 15 that will just hit and so this creature Whatever it is, will take. Uh, oh. That sounded exciting. <laughs> is the creature dead? <laughs> the creature takes thirty points of damage. From this one just wild haymaker punch right into the eye. So stay away from him. Got it. Uh, It is now your turn, Karnov. Okay. So I'm having a hard time seeing the thing here. Uh, Uh, Sorry, yeah. Okay, so uh, here... Oh, because he's positioned right to block you guys. Yeah, I... I, Sorry about that. I I can't see me. Oh, so he's right there. You're over here. Okay, so I'm gonna He's move. Right here, but... So I'm gonna move forward to that middle pew there. That's still the pew, right? Yeah. So one, two, three, four. This one or this one? Uh, the the first. Yeah, that one. That one. That one. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of use it as a kind of brace. All right. You have uh, half cover. Perfect. And I'm going to just make this easy. And I think I am going to go for a firebolt at Felix. Okay, roll it. Not at the creature. Sorry. Roll it. He said roll it. Okay. D20, let's go. They, like, cut out, so I wasn't sure. Uh, 13. 13 to hit Felix? Yes. Just just hits. Sweet. So roll your d10. I think I'm still just at 1d10 for this, right? Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll turn into 2d10 when you level up to 5. That's what I thought. Alright, that's the right one. Yeah, that's the right one. Uh, uh, 2. Two points of damage. Okay. So you send this little bolt of fire, sort of crouching over the um, uh, over the pew and sort of like ducking around and just, and it shoots and it only sort of nicks his uh, knee a little bit, but and he, but he looks down and you see that the fire sort of engulfs a bit of his um, his like burlap pants and he's now currently like ignited and he's trying to pat it out and and where. You shot your flame over the like where the 
the creature raking with claws, it doesn't regenerate. Okay. That's a good sign. Merit, hmm. it is now your turn. Seeing that perhaps keeping him incapacitated uh, might be a good idea, He, um, I will cast Tasha's Hideous Laugh on Felix. Uh, what's the range on that? You're kind of far out, actually. This is a big church. I have no idea what the range is on... Uh, I didn't write that down. All right, I can look it up. I believe it's 30 feet. Is he 30 feet away? He is not. You can get that close. Uh, 30 feet, yep. So you need to get at least... Uh, he's right there, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You need to get, like, right here or here. All right, so I'm going to move right there, and I'm going to throw Tasha's hideous laughter his way. Okay, he's got to make a uh, wisdom save. Right? I believe it's when... Uh, I got to look these things up again. Uh, such good content. Book flipping content. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Like and subscribe for all the book stuff. Uh, yeah. So mash that subscribe button. Mash that subscribe button as I look up the rules for magic. Um, he rolls a uh, wow. He rolls a twenty-three on his wisdom save. So Aww. that'll do it. So you sort of like you you wiggle your fingers and he casts this spell and he sort of looks he looks at you and he realizes it's happening and just. <sighs> He grunts and shakes his head. Oh. One of these one of these days. One of these days I'm gonna cast Tasha's hideous laughter on a major villain and it'll be great. <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> uh Alexandris, it's your turn. Ridiculous thing ever. I am going to Hold on. Uh... You can always take the wand of smiles out of my bag. No, thank you. Yeah, please try it. <laughs> Inflict wounds is the one that I have to hold on to him, correct? Yeah, you have to touch him for that. Yeah. Um, I will go. <laughs> I'm going to do sacred flame again. All right. Are you gonna move it all? Um, where am I? You're currently in the back over here. Can I just move a little bit that way, like to the my his right? Yeah, All just right. so I, yeah, right there, and just shoot sacred flame at him. Okay. Dex save. He rolls a, an eight, so that fails. So he will take one d eight radiant damage. One d eight. Okay. Yeah. So he's sort of laugh. He's sort of shrugging off like the laughter effect to not even realize that this bolt of white light comes down and hits him right on the shoulder. Um, I rolled a four. Okay, he takes four points of damage. And where's my pan? There it is. No, this is not my pan. No, I'll, it'll do. And so you shoot him, and the fire comes down right into another area where he was uh, raked, and also where the radiant damage hits. His, um... Wounds do not close over. Good. Cool. And so now it's the creature's turn, and it sort of shakes off this orange glow, but it looks at Felix, and it, it can't force itself to move anywhere close there. So it looks at you three now, and not knowing what you are, sort of whoosh, whoosh. You hear this, um, you, great, you hear the swishing of wind as it picks up its wings, and then flies over to all of you, and it emits this horrifying, piercing screech. <laughs> and I need everyone to roll uh, constitution saving throws. That's a d20? Yep. Constitution save. Here we go. Hey, that's 20. Plus two, so 22. Okay. Ten. Okay. So I rolled a one. Ah! Oh! But, oh! but, you got, you got but, lucky. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I'm lucky. I'm going to use my roll. Yep. Reroll it. I got a four. <laughs> you can keep, you can keep spending luck if you wish. 
I'm gonna spend one more luck. <laughs> I got a twenty. Got okay. a twenty. <laughs> All right. So it emits this ear piercing roar, and then um, a carnod. You are currently stunned. But uh, Merit and um, Alexandra, sort of, maybe even knowing what's coming, you preemptively, um, you know, guard your ears with your hands. And you hear this screech, and it, it rattles your bones, but you shrug it off. Um, Alexandra, you feel it almost, like, clutch your stomach, and there's just something within you that just decides, no, not today. And you shake it off, but you... Karnov are just like clutching onto your head and in the fetal position on the ground. You are stunned. And you are, you just hear like the ee! And you are just frozen from this roar. And uh, that is it. So now it is Felix's turn. And he sees you there, standing there, Merit, and he just runs up and just comes swinging with this wild haymaker. Can I dodge it? Nope. You can't do that yet. Level 5, buddy. Oh, uh, no. So that is a 26 to hit you? Sure is. And then he will also... So he just cracks you across the face, and then he comes with a left haymaker, and then with his right fist he goes in for an uppercut. And that is a uh, 16 to hit you? Sounds about right. Oof. So he just cracks you across the face, and then with an uppercut, just right in the gut. And you take a total of... You take uh, 23 points of bludgeoning damage from both hits. Wham! Wham! Oh, wow. Wow, I'm not dead. Awesome. And he's just like staring at you and he's just like, you should run now. You don't have to be involved with the priest's business, fool. And he notice that he's not like putting on a voice. It seems like he's like, he's trying to speak normally, but his it sounds like his vocal cords are just removed and scratched. And so it's just like this angry hoarse whisper at full volume. And you have, you've had the, you, you're... Your jaw is really sore now. You feel like you're getting a black eye, and the wind has just been driven right out of your solar plexus. Oh, jeez. And, and it's my turn now, right? Not yet. It is Karnov's, but Karnov is currently stunned. So you basically lose your turn, I'm afraid. That's fine. Uh, I, I, what can I do? What can I do? Okay, Merit, now it's your turn. And I tell him... Buddy, I ain't doing this for the priest. I'm doing this for the fun of it. And I throw one of the hammers right at his uh, noggin. Uh, so you're trying for a ranged, or you're within melee range, so you're going to try to just uh, swing at him? Oh, wait, oh yeah, I have my uh, uh, my my daggers on me, don't I? Yeah, uh, yeah I'm going to... Uh, um, do that. There we go. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, okay. That works. You know what? Uh, magic missile seems to like hit him successfully, and I remember Alex not having any uh, bueno with uh, hitting him with stuff. So I'm just gonna throw magic missile at him. Okay. So you just point out your your hand like right in his face, and shoot like right into his eyes. So go for it. Roll it. Uh, that's a four. That's another four. Okay. And that's a one. Okay. So, so plus nine, three. So that's twelve. Twelve. Okay. And I also like move. Can I move too? Uh, he will get an attack of. Uh, actually, it, you can use your bonus action to disengage, and then you can move. I'm gonna use my bonus action to disengage, and then I'm going to uh, move behind Karloff. Okay. So you just. You're by, by my screaming fetal position body and hide. Sure am. Ahoy, hoy. Three bolts of arcane energy right into his eyes, and he recoils temporarily blinded, and he used that brief window to just duck and turn and sort of barrel roll out of there and then run behind 
your stunned compatriot. And he sort of uh, shakes it off and he looks at you, just angry. Alexandris, it's your turn. <sighs> okay, what can I do? I think... It sucks, I only have, like, inflict wounds really as, like, an attack magic. You have a uh, guiding mm. bolt, a uh, spiritual weapon... Uh, Guardians of Faith, maybe? Actually, you might not be high enough level for that, but you got a couple. Okay. The range vent on a hit. Okay, I think I'll... With Guiding Bolt, it's basically just shooting light at the... Yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to do Guiding Bolt. Okay, so roll an attack. So it's a d20 plus uh, 6, I believe. Okay, so seventeen plus six. Okay, that definitely hits. So it is uh it's three it's forty six, right? Radiant. Wait, what? The damage, is it four Oh yeah, it's yeah, four D six. Okay, roll that. Nice. So D six four times. Okay. Uh D six so one, six, four, six. So, uh, 1664, that is yes. uh, 17 points of Radiant. The next attack against him has advantage. Ooh. So you just point your arm at him and just fire off this um, bolt. As it comes out of your... Actually, like, you extend your hand and, like, the um, the Libra of Kelimvor sort of um, appears spectrally around your hand, and then it takes the shape of a crossbow, and then from your middle finger shoots this white bolt of radiant energy, and it just slams right into Felix's chest. And his wounds stop uh, regenerating from that hit. Cool. So, it is the creature's turn, and seeing you all sort of collected, it sort of rises up about um, ten more feet in the air, and just swoops over all of you, and it just starts flapping its its wings. And you re- you look up and you see all of these green particles, these spores, just start raining down on you like it's a down like it's a um like this tempest, this downpour of green rain. And as it seeps into your skin and falls into your eyes, nostrils, and mouth, you feel it harder to breathe. And I need everyone to roll. Uh, constitution saving throws. That's a 19 plus plus C plus C plus C plus 2, so 21. Okay, what's wrong? What's up with your dice, Ryan? It's been it's been a lot of high rollers. Yeah. Well, They're weighted. Roll. You got some you got some voodoo dice over there. Okay. Want me to roll want me to roll it again just in case? Sure. Uh that was a ten. Okay, that's fine. You can keep the 19. I believe you. <laughs> you better have kept the 19. Travis, go ahead. And uh, Alexander. Do I get to get up? Yeah, you're fine. But you need to roll okay. the constitution. This is a new thing that it's raining down on okay. you guys. Okay. I misunderstood. You're no longer stuck. Okay. 14. Okay. I had, I had 17. Wow, this thing can't do anything for shit, I guess. So as it sort of comes down, you... Ugh. You you instantly fight the urge to vomit as this poison sort of courses through your vein, but you Karnov sort of choke it down and you realize I had a way worse experience this morning. I can take this, and <laughs> it has no effect. <sighs> and Alexandrus, you're almost too just laser focused on Felix to even notice it. Merit as it rains down, you sort of instinctively pull your hood over your head, and none of the spores come down to really hit you and affect you. And uh, that will be the creature's turn. It is now Felix. And so he's staring at all of you, and he's looking at, and he looks at you, Alexandrus, and his eyes begin to glow orange. And he realizes, remember, priest, you're on the list now. And he sort of runs up, and as he runs, you see his fists glow orange, and he just comes in with a huge fist. 
That is a 16 to hit you. Okay. So That's a hit. Um, oof. I hear that oof. Not a good sign. <laughs> not, not, not a great sign for you. Ooh. Ooh, if I use one of my last luckies, can you reroll that bad one? <laughs> With disadvantage, yeah. I can, you can do that. Yeah, reroll that really bad one that I just heard. All right. Um, <laughs> so actually, you make him roll a ten, so that roll will miss. So this fist sort of whoosh, whoosh right by your skit, right by your chin, and then he just with his second fist comes in to punch you right in the gut, and that will be a uh, twenty-six to hit you. So just twenty-six hits of damage. No, 26 to, to hit, like, past your armor, which I believe hits. Okay. And so you will take... Uh, da, 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 da. You take uh, 25 points of bludgeoning damage as this glowing orange fist just cracks right into your ribs and you feel one of them break. Bam! And that will be his turn. Oof. Karnov, it is now yours. Uh, you're free to do what you want now. You're no longer stunned. Uh, you see okay. this creature about uh, 10 feet up in the air. And you see Felix right up next to uh, Alexandra swinging. I'm a fan of keeping him at a distance. But I need to check something before I do that. Because if I get a little too arrogant, I might hurt somebody. Attack him. <laughs> attack him. Oh, I'm going to attack him. Just. What do you mean there's a problem loading this page? Uh, what spell are you thinking of using? I was, th- was going to see what Thunder Wave is. Thunder Wave is just a radial spell, so it'll hit. No, it's a it's like a force wave. It's everything in front of you. So you could Okay. You could angle it if you want to just hit Felix. I think that's what I want to do. Okay. So, um you will have to get him get him off of Alexandrus. Yeah, you'll have to pop out and of cover and get like right here, but then you can force push him. Yep, that's let's do it. All right. So he's got to roll a uh, constitution save. Um, he rolls a 26, so he will, he won't move, and he'll take half damage, but he'll still take damage from the spell, which I believe is 3d8. Uh, I tried. It's fine. And he will take half of 3d8. Uh, five, seven... And seven, so that's nineteen. Half of nineteen is uh is a, as a fraction. Nine. It's nine. It's nine. It's nine. It's nine. That would have been great if it had actually hit. Alexander, so that would have killed him if he if it had hit in full force. That killed me or killed him? Killed the the who's it? Zombie. That thing. I don't okay. know. Like we're waiting. I guess it's okay. the health. He takes nine points of force damage, and he sort of just, like, braces and... Whoosh, like, you see him, like, he digs his feet into the ground, like, into the wood itself, and it snaps as he digs his heels in, and you see the fabric tear off of him, and his hood actually rips away. And now you see, like, his gray scalp with hair falling off of it, this dead, rotting skin of once a man, now a corpse but still walking. And so, uh, that will be your turn. It is now Merit's. I am going to use the Wand of Smiles. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I am going... I am going... How many of those hammers can I throw at him? Ha- how many hammers can you throw at him? Out of the three. Can I throw all three hammers at him? One turn. Uh, you know, you could. It would it would not be effective. It's not like you're not an expert hammer thrower. This is like an impromptu thing. Uh, all right. So, um, 
I'm just going to, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to, uh, work him with, uh, my hand crossbow. Okay, go for it. So roll your attack. That's a what now? That's a d20 plus 6. D20 plus 6. Yeah, to hit. Well, I rolled a 5. So that's an 11. So that will miss, unfortunately. As you point the crossbow and fire, and your, your shot goes wide as it just zips right over his shoulder. Can I use the bonus action to use the Wand of Smiles? Uh, no. Cause no. That's, uh, <laughs> use magic item is an action, unless you're a You should just use the Wand of Smiles just to, like, stab him. <laughs> it's more effective at this point. Next turn. Next turn. I'll just jab him with it. I'll just, I'll just throw the Wand of Smiles at him with a bludgeoning yeah. weapon. We stab him to be like, Wand of Smiles. Smile! And just throw it at him. All right, uh, Alexandrus, it is your turn. Is he grappling onto me, or like no. am I? F- he's just like it's like boxing. He's just like squared up with you, five feet away. Could I move and use a spell, or like am I only able to do one? You can you can move away out of his melee range, but then he will get one free attack on you to try and swipe at you. Oh, like if I move, he'll he'll try and attack me. Yeah. Okay, so. How about I... I'm going to use the Guiding Bolt again. Oh, okay. Um, oh, actually... And as I do... What? Yeah, the last attack... Your other Guiding Bolt hasn't faded away, so um, this is interesting. Yeah, so like you would be at disadvantage with Guiding Bolt because it's a ranged attack, but mm-hmm. um, since he's hit with the Guiding Bolt, you would have advantage, so it's just a normal roll, ironically. Okay. So, yeah, just roll D20 plus uh, 6. Uh, 25. 25. Oh, he rolled a 19. Damn. Yeah. So, um, and then as I'm doing it, can I just, my words be to hell with your list? Yeah. <laughs> to hell with your list. Bam! And you shoot another one of these uh, spectral crossbow bolts right into his gut. Right yeah. where, like, the, the glowing target of your last shot hit. So roll those 46 again. Okay. 6, 5, 6, Eleven. 3. Oh, okay, so that's uh, 12, 17, 20 points of damage. Dang. Y'all. Is he dead yet? He, he, he shit, zombie. He is not dead. He has a lot of, he he has a lot shot. of HP. <laughs> you fools. You're on the wrong side of this. Yeah, we often are. Prove it. It is now. We're definitely fools, though. It Fake is... news. It is now the creature's turn, and he will swoop down right here, and he will bite at Karnov and then drag his claws across the pews and right up to, like, with an uppercut slash right at um, Merit. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, Karnov, that is a um, 24 to hit you. Oh, and then yeah, that hits. Merit, that will be a um, da, 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 a thirteen to hit you. Does not hit me. Okay, so Karnov, you take you take uh, seven points of damage. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Piercing. As it sort of swoops down, and you try to like you 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 stick your hand out instinctively to guard the attack, and so it bites right onto your forearm, but it would have been your face, so that's a better hit. And then as it pivots around, you sort of see the next attack coming, Merit, as these three razor claws just sort of grind through the wood, tearing it up as they come, and then swing up, and you just r- roll out of the way. Said that was a seven. Seven points, yeah. Okay. So now it is uh, Felix's turn, and he's going to stare at right at right at to you, um, Alexandrus. He's just like, I don't have 
Time for this. And his eyes glow orange. And I would like you, Alexandrus, to roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh, 12. Do I get a modifier? Uh, your wisdom save modifier, yeah. Uh, so it'd be oh, at least four. Through. So I think it's plus six, six. Six. So it's an six, 18. So... No, 12 plus six. Yeah, 18. Okay. So he's staring at you, and this orange glow washes over you, and you feel your cracked rib, and fear begins to wash over you, but then uh -oh. you, you feel the faith of Kalimvor rise up within you, and you're like, no, not today. And it, ha it has no effect, and the orange glow fades, and he Felix realizes that you are unafraid, and now he looks terrified. Not today, Satan. Not today. <laughs> Karnov, it is your turn. Okay, same deal. Actually, I want Karnov, to... can you roll me a d20? 20! Okay, nothing happens. Go ahead. Okay. Continue. Uh, so I'm going to do Thunder Wave again, but I think I need to get this big old beast off my back. Yeah, he's he's currently down on the ground, and he's sort of engaged yeah. both you and Merit. Yeah, I want him out of my space, so I'm going to target him with Thunder Wave. Okay, go for it. 17. Uh, oh, wait, he has to make a save against that. It's, oh, yeah, duh. It's one of Here I am, not reading my own spells. Uh, he rolls a 7, so he will be pushed back from it. Yeah. Okay. And he will take full damage. 4. 4. 4. Okay, so he Grand takes... Grand total 12. He takes 12 points of damage. And he is thrown back into the other pew. Wham. Good. Get away. Okay. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no. I think I'm going to hold my ground here. Okay. Merit, it's your turn. I'm going to take my short sword and I'm going to stab uh, Felix Boy in the head. Okay. You have advantage on this because of the guiding bolt. Aye. Uh, yeah. So go for it. Roll uh, a d20 and then my attack? Yeah, and then do that twice. Take the higher number. Of the d20 or the attack? Well, the d20, yeah. Two d20s, whichever the higher d20. Well, I rolled a 7 and an, and an 18, so you so, so which that, one I, I run. So that's the 18. 18 plus your attack modifier. Or 18 hits anyway. So yeah, you hit, you do damage, and you do sneak attack. Ooh. So what of these nice dice do we need to throw? I forget what I have to do for sneak attack. So it's a D6, and I believe your sneak attack does an extra uh, 2D6. So it's 3D6 plus 4. 5, 4, 3, plus... So, uh, nine, so 12 plus 4 is 16. But that takes 8 points of damage as you take take your blade and you just like drive it into his jaw and it sort of unhinges it <laughs> and you pull your short sword out a blow that would have killed anybody else and you pull it out and then you see the sinews want just <laughs> crack back in shape and it seems like your blade didn't quite pierce his flesh as much as you thought it would uh, beans. but he's weak ah. yeah well, it looks like it may be uh, your turn to finish him off, Alexandrus. It is your turn, Alexandrus. I am going to do Guiding Bolt once again. Okay, you will have disadvantage this time, because he's right up to you. But you could do Inflict Wounds, because he's right up oh. to you. Okay, um, I'll do Inflict Wounds instead. Okay, so roll that attack. Oh, it's a uh, 3d10? Well, roll roll the d20 to see if you hit first. Oh. I got a 17. Okay, that will hit. Okay, so roll and then 3d10, right? Yep. 9, okay. 7, 3. Okay. Uh, what is your line as you grip Felix Thorncutter by the throat? Sorry. And the energy of Kelimvor surges into you. And you watch his body begin to disintegrate. Do it. Is it like 
It's it's a light energy, not a fire. Um, my line will be rot in hell. Yeah, which is appropriate because you're inflicting necrotic damage. So he is literally rotting. His cheeks just be turned sallow and disintegrate. And he's just like, no, no, you don't know what you're doing. And then, like, you watch as his bones crumble to dust, blacken and ash, and then poof, poof, poof. As, like, as you just you keep holding onto his head, and you just watch as those orange burning coal eyes go dark. And then this whole body you're holding just crumbles into ash and dust. And it fades. And then from where it is, you see this orange wisp sort of remaining in place. Of where there once was the body. And it's sort of like looking around confused. Mm. Cool. Well Wait, done. Gotta, gotta banish that thing. It says, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know. I'm trying to save this world. It is now the creature's turn. And having been pushed back, it'll sort of just dive right at Karnov and Merit. Actually, Karnov, I'd like you to roll another d20. Wild Mage. <laughs> Drop my dice again. Dang my little computer desk. Literally. Another 20. Wrong. Okay, you're fine. <laughs> now I'm getting the 20s. Yeah. yeah so... did you take my 20s or something? Yeah, jeez. So now this creature sort of just swoops down and then comes down with the talons, this time on Merits, and its beak, this time on Karnov. So, that will be a um, 14 to hit Karnov. That's a hit. And then that will be a 17 to hit Merit. That hits. Okay, so, um, Karnov, you take... Uh, da -da 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 -da, you take 10 points of piercing damage. Oof. As the beak, once again, just sort of bites right into your shoulder. And then this time, uh, Merit, you're so, like, amazed by watching Alexandra's disintegrate this body into dust that you don't see, you don't realize that there's three huge claws raking against your back until you feel the spike of pain. And just tell me what I hit. You take... Um... Da -da -da. You take 13 points of slashing damage. I'm down. I am down. So you just go down. It wasn't me this time! <laughs> and, uh, Felix, this new little wispy spirit is sort of lost, and it sort of, like, slowly fades in this direction. But that's all I can do. Yeah. Karnov, it's your turn. Uh, jeez. Mm, what do I want to do? I should... I'm going to move back. Okay. It will, it will try to bite at you if you do so. Gosh, that's right. I think I'm just going to have to burn another splot, uh, another cell, uh, spell slot and thunder wave them back again. All right, go for it. It rolls the uh, saving throw. It rolls a uh, 12. What is your DC? 13. All right, then it fails. It gets pushed back, takes full damage. Sweet. That is a 8. A 3. And a four. So he takes 15 points of damage. And then I will move back. Okay, so he's back to where he was. Uh, which which direction? Towards the creature? Uh, this way? Away from the creature, just straight back from where I am. So, like, over here? Yep. All right, so you get, you're back against the wall. And you see, now, you see now Felix is gone, and there's now this just, like, this orange wispy thing. So it was trying, Good. To, trying to slowly move towards the door. Zambi. Merit, roll me a death saving throw. 16. Alright, that's one success. 
So, Alexandris, it is your turn. Since Save the Dying is a cantrip, can I, am I able to use that than the Banish spell? Uh, yeah, cause since you are a special Grave Cleric, you can spare the Dying as a bonus action, and then use your action to pull out the scroll. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to use... Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to use uh, Save the Dying to save him, and then cast Banish. Okay, so you, with both hands, you, one hand you pull out the scroll, the other you aim at um, uh, Merit's body, and this light shines over it, and you see him begin to breathe. He's still unconscious, but his bleeding stops. And then you, unfol <laughs> you unfurl the scroll, and you read aloud the arcane words in a language you don't even realize that you can understand in this moment. And then as you begin to reading it, this sort of like black hole sort of spawns in um, thin out of thin air right behind the orange wisp and starts sucking it in and you see it begin to slowly dissolve but it just says no no you fool you don't understand the church it's the church is controlled by and then as it starts getting sucked away you just hear one word as it fades away in existence rapidly controlled by Demogorgon and the uh, what? You just did you just say Demigorgon? <laughs> you did hear the word Demogorgon. Uh, uh, we'll cross that bridge in a second. There's a giant monster. And upon yeah. hearing that name, the monster itself roars <laughs> almost with renewed vigor. Upon hearing that name ring out in this church. And now it's its turn. And it flies away. <laughs> and it flies straight for you. And Karnov. Oh, crap. And it starts spreading its spores again. I'd like both of you to roll me constitution saving throws again. No, oh, crap. Seven. You are poisoned. Ugh. D20, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I got a two, but I'm going to use my inspiration to pass. Good choice. You had it. So that's fine. Nothing happens then. Uh, Karnov, it is your turn. At the start of which, you take uh, four points of poison damage. Not a fan of this. All right. And uh, you may go about your business. Uh, oh, you all, you're all, you are also poisoned, so you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Not good, not good. Can I use to save myself? Oh, you know what? I got a healing potion last time. That you did. And I think I'm going to use it right okay. now. Okay, glug glug, that's 2d4 plus 2. 2 and 4 for 6, is so I get 8 back. Yep. That puts me in a better position, I think. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And then... Uh, I hope this idea of mine works. What you gonna do? Thinking about pulling out Hellish Rebuke. Oh, I think that's a that's a thing when they hit you. You can use your reaction yeah. to it. Well, that's, what, that's why I'm like... Do I pull it out and do, do I stand here and let it attack me again? Is really what I'm asking. Oh, yeah. This is what I'm asking myself. Mm -hmm. The quandary of a tiefling. Do I get attacked? Yeah. Oh, I guess like uh, but it has to do with dex way. save, and I am. Well, there's me on the ground. There you are. You probably wonder. Yeah. You got probably this wonder. <laughs> there. <laughs> exactly. Scratch yeah. Record frame. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. 
Not good, not good, not good, not good. Not good, not good, not good is like the fourth thing we've said that we can put, like, put on a t-shirt tonight. Not good, right? Not good, not good. <laughs> right? If I screw this up, I'm going down too. <sighs> okay. Doing? What you doing? What you doing, Karnov? What you got? Yes. Well, I... I think I'm going to try to just get it to... So I'm just gonna try to scare it off. I'm going to cast Thaumaturgy. Okay. To make my voice incredibly loud. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to order this creature to to leave us alone in the most threatening voice that I can in my weakened state. All right. Um... Just let out a enough. Roll an intimidation check. Okay, you at would, disadvantage? You would have disadvantage. I'll say the Thaumaturgy cancels that out, so it's just a straight-up roll. Do you have okay. inspiration? You do have inspiration. I, think. I do have an inspiration. I might have to use it. Let's see what happens. So that takes me to a 10. I don't want to die, so I'm going to bust out that inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in your corner, this beast is looming over you. And you just shout in, uh, what do, you, what do you shout at it? I just shout enough in like, uh, like you're, like you're trying to tell your dog to settle down. All right. <laughs> like with just absolute authority. So it's sort of, it, what it does, it really confused at, and of this volume coming from what it's probably perceiving is probably a smaller wounded creature it grounds itself sort of over here and it looks around rather confused like it's reassessing things not like it's about to leave but it's just you caught it off guard a little bit Unmarried. good so uh merit it is your turn you are sleeping <laughs> alexandrus it is your turn poor little sleepy boy um if i use healing i get another action right uh you can use healing word and then another spell. Okay, so I'm going to use a level two spell slot. Okay. Healing, healing word on Merrick. Okay, so um, that'll, that'll be a two d four plus four. Do I roll it or he rolls it? You roll it. So two d four. Yeah. And then plus uh, four. Three. One, so eight. Okay, so Merit, you pop back up. <gasps> eight HP. Woo! So then that was your bonus action. What's your action? You got your okay. trips. You got level ones. I know, I'm thinking. <laughs> um, so right now he's confused. And the last uh, we barely attacked this guy. Should I try Tomaturgy to send him away, or should I, mean, I attack to be, him? To be fair, his he was already busted up pretty bad by Felix on the way in here. You notice it? He's yeah. only been flying yeah. about 10, 20 feet up. His wing has been badly wounded already. He's looking pretty rough, actually. Okay. If I, if I use a level 2 spell in Guiding Bolts, does that increase any damage? It, in, it increases the damage, yep. That's how casting at higher level works. Okay, so I'm going to use one of my level... I'm going to use my last level 2 spot to attack with Guiding Bolt. Okay, so... Um, let me see how much more damage it does with that. I believe it's just one more... It's one more D6, so it'll be 5 D6 if you hit. So, roll. So, uh, D20 plus 6. Uh, trying to do mash. 13. 13. That will just hit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay. So how many D6s do I roll? Five. Okay. Six. One. Three. Four. Four. 
so that's uh sorry it's a six four four one three four four three one six four four so that's eight three eleven one twelve plus six is eighteen yeah yeah eighteen not bad so what's your line as you send this one to hell uh... as you point out this crossbow and just fire straight through its jaw and out one of its eyes I don't know what's a good one guys you're lucky you didn't get it get the wand of smiles in your face no <laughs> no no well smile is it say cheese is a good one. um this big flapping creature shrieking and you shoot it and it comes crashing down you're grounded there you <laughs> go good. you're That's a good one. grounded Phew! and it hits it right in the eye <laughs> and it crashes down this huge blue bird-like entity and with that you have defeated everything in this room Woo! Woo! i search his corpse looking for loot <laughs> which which one uh either b both of them I get Felix. I deserve whatever. Felix, <laughs> Felix. disintegrated into everything except there's nothing <laughs> except the noose that was around his neck. So what's in the uh, the the wyvern? Is that a wyvern? Did we kill a wyvern? Uh, Alexandrus can roll a religion check. Hold on. And you know what? Maybe maybe Karnov can roll one too. Okay. I'll roll Nine. one for Hoot, too. 19. Uh, it's going to be a 5, one. so... Well, I rolled a 1, so I have no idea what this is. 19. 19. So, um... That's actually pretty good. So, uh, looking at this creature now, and you notice, like, the like the elongation of the limbs, all the stuff in its mouth, and you notice, like, around its head, there's, like, these ridges with spikes coming out of it. And uh, with all the talk of Demogorgon and the sign that talked about demons, you're looking at all of these and you're realizing, yeah. And you see, like, the, the Icarus blood that's sort of pooling out of it. It's abyssal in nature. You know it as it sort of, like, hisses black as it leaves the neck. This is a demon. You're not 100% sure which one, but you do know that, yes, this is a demon. So, Damn. I loot... So can I pilfer through this demon dragon thingy's body and see if I can find like any like jewels on it? Uh, that's a good question. Let me see if it would actually if it would actually carry anything. I don't think so. I think it's just a big vulture guy. Oh uh, no loot. Aww. Um Oh, actually, um, roll an investigation check. I believe I am proficient in investigation. I am. You are. All right. Uh, that is a 15 plus 4, so that's a 19. A 19, yeah. So you're sort of reaching around, like, under its armpits. You find, like, these, like, like these inlets. Like, almost like there were pockets, but in his flesh. And you sort of reach in, and one hand, you pull out just a handful of those, like, green spores, and you instantly just, like, ugh, and shake it off. But you reach into another one, and you feel a couple little bits of metal. And what? You, you pull them out, and there are, um... There are ten sort of roughly... Sort of rough, they're not polished, little, um, various rings. Hey. They look like they might be made out of silver. Hey, I can sell these and get my money from that wand of whatchamacallits back. So you got ten silver rings in this guy's little pouch. And they all, hey. actually, if you're looking at them, they all look of various levels of, like, rust and, like, age. Like, this guy's been sort of, like, collecting for a while. 
he didn't just like collect 10 off of one dude he's been like grabbing various rings throughout his lifetime or he didn't like or more like it's you don't know if this is a he or a she or an anything because it's a demon hmm so it had a little uh little ring collection going on like how uh, normal people collect it collected uh rings go figure is there uh is there a picture of its family in there too no not this time <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, another thing you put on a there's shirt. A, there's a little baby vulture guy. There's a little like, vulture with lipstick and a bow on its head. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you put that on a shirt. Oh my god. What, what the, the family of the gnome that you murdered? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Put that on a shirt. Like, like slowly wafting in the wind with uh, I want to rock and roll all night written on the uh, back of Oh, my God. Oh, oh that, no. I forgot. That's what you did with it. You wrote the song on it. Uh, oh, not just any song. I wrote Kisses Rock and Roll. Yeah, night yeah. Oh, classic. No. Uh, this is why we play Dungeons and Dragons, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and, um... Oh, that was so good. So, um... I guess with that... It's been about two hours, and you guys have done the thing. We've done the thing. Indeed, you do. The impossible. And so, uh, the rest of you sort of take a breath. Karnov and Merit, are sort of, your head is still sort of, like, in a whirlwind of, like, what the hell did I just get myself into? Yeah, and a little bit. Alexandrus, you're sort of breathing heavily, proud that you finally got rid of Felix. His reign of terror is over. But you begin to wonder, he was fighting a demon. And he was fighting against Demogorgon. What's going on in the Life Church? And that is where we'll end this episode of The Dungeon Folks. Dun, dun, dun. So, um, thanks anybody who's watching or listening to this. Uh, I hope it looked and sounded okay. I know it's not the same level level of production value that Evan brings to this table. But uh, we didn't miss a Monday. We didn't do it. We did it. We committed. We got stuff <laughs> done. We closed up a, a story thread. We did it. And so... Um, Gets what's up. That's what's up. Damn it. So, um, yeah. I'm pretty tired after that. After running. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you guys are feeling after killing a revenant and a demon. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually pretty tired. But yeah, physically, I'm exhausted. And <laughs> as a character. Yeah, no, but y'all, y'all did it. That was pretty. We cool. went through the range of emotions tonight. From uh, <laughs> keep very close to casting uh, Tasha's hideous laughter on a revenant. Oh, that would have been so good. I was really hoping you'd reach for the wand of smiles and then just, or like, uh, maybe I'll retcon canon just like as you see Alexandra's holding him by the neck. You're like. <laughs> and so as he as he crumbles and dies, he's just like. <laughs> so he killed the so he just killed the Joker then. Yeah, you killed you killed Zombie Joker. There you go. I'm gonna have so zombie much fun with Zombie this. Batman Joker. There you go. I'll send you the details. I'm gonna have so much. Smiles. Okay. I'm gonna... Why I know what it does. Yeah, it's a, it's a really simple thing. I feel like I'm gonna have I, so much fun with it. Yeah, I feel like at this point now. Every if Merrick ever retells the story, it'll just be like little clips of him like retelling it, where he has like the wand of like smiles, just like. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the demon, mature. the demon came for me, but I fended him back with the one thing he had never experienced. Yes. Happiness. Yes. <laughs> I afflict like you with joy. <laughs> and we'll return to uh, Merrick's uh, fun shine smile tacular next week. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, next week, hopefully, we get everything back and rolling, and we'll see what uh, we'll see what Flint and Ori w- were up to this whole time, and then uh, resolve everything before the heist. It's coming. It's finally around the corner. But uh, yeah, so thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Uh, peace out.